Welcome to Lemons.com in our lab video series on MPLS. You can find a complete list of MPLS video on our website by clicking on the link above and sign up for our newsletters to receive the latest video updates. In this video, we're going to be looking at how to configure a route reflector in MPLS VPN network and some of its related features. And these includes traffic load sharing for a site that has a Juhome CE router and a route filter and route target rewrite. For our physical lab topology, we have eight routers, R1 through R8, and one switch, switch one, with the router R2, R3, R4, and R5 connected over the serial point-to-point -point link, and any other router and switch connected across a layer two VLAN. In this lab, our switch ones is due home since it's going to be using as our due home CE router. We also, although we're showing that there is a directly connected link between R6 and R7. We're not going to be using that particular link in this lab. Okay, for our layer three topology, at the middle here, we have our MPLS core network with R1, R2, and R4 being a PE routers and R3 and R5 being a P routers. We already have our MPLS VPN sites configured for two customer, the VRFC1 for site one and four and VRFC2 for site two and three. And we are running BGP for all of our PECE routing protocols with the customer C1 has the AS number of 65124 and customer C2 with the AS of 65010. And again, just to reiterate, our CE devices on switch one is dual home and has a dual BGP sessions to two PE routers, R2 and R4. So site three is going to be the site that we're going to be using to test our load sharing. So first, let's take a look at our lab scenario. Here, we are asked to improve the scalability of MPLS core network by adopting route reflector design. So here we the task number one with route reflector. Configure R3 as a route reflector, and R1, R2, and R4 as a route reflector clients. Okay, we need to use pure template, and we need to verify the connectivity between all of our VPN sites remains the same. So let's take a look at our diagram here is our r3 router is currently only acting as a p router so currently we have our one r4 and r2 configured as a full mesh bgp or ibgp what we're going to do is to leverage r3 to be our route reflector so here our one r4 and r2 it's going to only be pairing with r3 and since R3 is going to have pretty much identical connections or sessions to all of the PE router, this is a good candidate to use the peer template for the BGP configuration. So let's start off our configuration on R3. So here on R3, first we do router BGP to enable BGP, no auto, no synchronization. And we can also disable default IPv4 since we're not dealing with IPv4 BGP here. And then before we can configure a neighbor, we need to define our pure template. So first we do the first type of template, which is pure session. We're just gonna call this PE since we're gonna use that to connect to our PE routers. So in the peer templates, hopefully you guys are familiar with the concept of peer template by now. Otherwise we have a separate videos that talks about how to configure peer template and how it might be different from peer group that you might be familiar with. So here we need to define a remote AS. Since we are doing IBGP session, the AS number will be the same, which is 100. And then we want to use our loopback zero, as always, to source our IBGP session. Okay, then we have to configure a second type of template, which is Peer policy, we'll use the same name, PE. And under peer policy, what we need for our MPBGP session, the first one is the SAN community. Okay, since we're going to be sending route target as part of the extended community, so we need to send community extended. And then we need to define that our peer is going to be a route reflector client. Okay, so route reflector client. Now we need to configure a neighbor. And R3 is going to have three neighbors. First is the router R1 using its loopback 0 IP. With the inherit command, peer session, we call it PE. Then just up arrow, change that for R2, and then R4. 
Okay, then we need to get under the address family VPN v4 as always to configure the VPN v4 session with the neighbor 162.16.0.1 first activate and then inherit and we already have the peer policy configured then for R2 and then for R4 Okay, you can see pretty straightforward and it saves you a lot of configuration that you might have to repeat with the peer template. Next, we have to go back and fix our router R1 since currently R1 has a session to R2 and R4. We're going to replace that with a single BGP session to R3. So router BGP 100. And we can just get rid of a neighbor. So no neighbor, 16.0.2 and then 0 0.4. Let's see what we have left at this point. Okay, so we already have our peer policy, peer session. So those remains pretty much the same. You can see the configuration under the VPN v4 address family has been blanked out. Now we need to define our neighbor. 162.16.0.3 inherit peer session PE. Then address family VPN v4 neighbor for activate and then inherit peer policy PE. Okay, we'll do the same thing for R2. Router BGP 100, no neighbor. 162.16.0.1, and then uh, 4, so dot 4. 162.16.0.3, remote AS 100, VPN V4, and then activate, inherit peer policy, PE. And our last PE router is R4. Router BGP 100, no neighbor. R1, remove R2, then add R3. Inherit, peer session, PE. Address VPN V4. Then add R3. I mean, I could have easily done this on Notepad, and then you can see it just copy and paste since the command is pretty much identical on all of the three PE routers. Peer policy PE. Now give it a second for the session to come up All right here. You can do show IP VGP, VPN V4 all just to check and make sure that. R4 is still seeing all the routes. So R4, it's part of VRFC2, so it should only be getting the route from R8, which is also part of the VRFC2. And you can see that the next top IP for R8 doesn't change, although it's actually learning that route through R3. So the next hop is still router R1. Okay, now going to R1, show IP, BGP, VPN, V4, all. Uh, one, since it's part of both VRF, you should be seeing all the routes. So for VRFC1, you see the local routes from R6 and then the remote routes from R8 being learned through R2 and same with the VRFC2. Okay, so at this point, everything still looks the same. Then just to make sure that we have everything configured correctly on R2, do a quick verification, R6, R7, R8, switch one. Okay, so it looks like all the routes are still there. And then finally on R3, let's see what it looks like from a route reflector perspective. So show IP, BGP, VPN, V4, all. And you can see that R3 has a knowledge of all of the routes as well, obviously because it's reflecting the routes for all of the PE devices. Okay, so here it has the, although it has no concept, but you can see because we didn't create the VRF, it has no concept of a VRF. All it knows is the route has been tagged with a 
route distinguisher value and that's it. So we have a RD of 100, 100 and RD of 200, 200. So obviously these are part of the VRFC1, we know that, and this part of the VRFC2. Right? If we do a summary, obviously it has three neighbors. Let's do a quick test and make sure our connectivity across the MPLS VPN is still there from R6 pinging R7. Okay, that's pinging. Give you a quick trace. Okay, and I just want to make a quick note here that the traffic doesn't really have to traverse the route reflector. It just happened that our route reflector R3 is the only path that R1 has to take to get to R2. So if you were to configure like R5 right here to be a route reflector, there's a possibility that the traffic doesn't even traverse R5. Okay, so route reflector is just used for path selection purposes. It doesn't really have to be actually in the path of the traffic. And so we just verify the VRFC1. So let's do a quick verification for VRFC2. So ping 10, 10, 0, 1, source of loop back 10. So ping switch 1, loop back 10. So you can see that it's still working. So that is pretty much our task number one.